Gold was trading at 1778, traded to 2078. A $300 rally, we can, we can all say, is a very substantial rally. We spoke last time, uh, you and I, and uh, when we spoke a few weeks ago, I think gold was just at the precipice of breaking its uh, last all time high. And, um, you know, we were talking about whether or not the momentum could be sustained. And you had given your forecast back then, your call for a little bit of a pullback, but I think overall you were still rather bear, uh, bullish. Now, uh, bearish sentiment actually prevailed following that conversation because now we're trading back down towards the $1,900 an ounce level. We're higher than $1,900 an ounce. But I'm just kidding. I just want to get your take on whether or not this momentum could be sustained or whether or not you think we're back to the same old trading range that we've seen for about 18 months prior to this bull run. Well, I, I, the one thing I will say is it is a unique scenario right now. We came $10 shy of the all-time record high at 2,088. We went to 78. But what I found most fascinating was the size of the rally. The rally began, what, the end of January, Gold was trading at 1778, traded to 2078. A $300 rally, we can, we can all say, is a very substantial rally. Typically, a good rally is what, 100, 150, maybe $200? So to, to have almost a linear move, $300, is impressive. With that in mind, when we look at the move from those highs down to uh, 1892, it turns out to be the 61.8% retracement, which is a key Fibonacci number. It's an acceptable correction, but a deep correction nonetheless. Beyond 78, and the count can be invalidated, but the point is we had a $300 rise, and it gave back a little bit over half of that. And so is it sustainable? I believe very possibly, but that's not what we're witnessing now. Because what we've seen for the last two weeks is a very tight range form again between the highs at 1964 and the lows at 1892. The other thing I'm noticing is that it is alternating candle color. Typically on a rally, you get the majority of candles being green on a correction majority being red. When you get that alternating candle color in a tight range, it tells you it's consolidating. My personal belief is it's forming a base, but that we'll have to see. Okay. Now, the $300 run-up that you, uh, you've mentioned, some economists have speculated that the geopolitical risk premium from the invasion of Ukraine is indeed $300. Um, take a look at this article that uh, my, my colleague at Keiko News, Anna Golubova, wrote today. Um, this was from an interview with a group of economists, the New Zealand banking group ANZ. Um, Actually, she didn't do the interview herself, but uh, uh, one of the strategists said this. And uh, he said that gold is consolidating after seeing its best quarter in about two years. Um, still, the precious metal will continue to experience high demand while the geopolitical uncertainty dominates the marketplace, said ANC senior commodity strategist Daniel Hines. Um, investors should be aware that the risk premium in gold has already reached $300. So what they're implying is that should tensions die down in Ukraine, it's possible that the geopolitical risk premium would be eroded away and gold will fall $300. Is that uh, something in the cards, Gary? I hope that it would be. I fear that it will not. And the reason I say that is even though they are negotiating, it's a very odd time because when R Russia negotiates, they're still doing military action. They haven't had a ceasefire. They haven't had a truce. The other thing is there's a tremendous divide between the goals of Russia, which is complete surrender, demilitarizing their military, and possibly even overthrowing their government. Ukraine simply wants to be autonomous. And those two things are so far apart. How do you reach a compromise where both sides feel as though they've accomplished what they're looking for? Because they're so far apart, I find that I believe it will get worse before it gets better. And I hope I'm wrong. Well, what is it about $2,000 that makes it such a key psychological level? It's been twice now in the last two years that gold has breached $2,000 and failed to sustain that level um, for any long period of time. 
typically when you get a new a record high at that point, especially if it goes up either parabolically or very, very sharp in terms of the attack, it will retrace just as quickly. We saw that when gold hit 2020, mid uh, 2011. We saw that when gold ran up 2008 to 2010. We saw it in August when it hit 2088. When you tend to hit those new highs, the market tends to correct fairly quickly from that point. Mm -hmm. The key is, is it going to have a, a higher low on the way down and then move to a higher high? And because the move was so large, we still have a much higher low. The question is, will it challenge that price point again? You know, Gary, gold has been moving up before Russian uh, forces invaded Ukraine. Remember that the uptrend was already there. The invasion just exacerbated the move. Now, some exactly. people like yourself have said that it's because of higher inflation expectations. So since gold has come down, what do you think the gold price is telling us now about inflation expectations? I think they're beginning to factor in a much more aggressive uh, Federal Reserve. They've already come out and said that they're at each of the six FOMC meetings this year, they will end it by initiating and implementing a rate hike. Initially, it was projected to be only a quarter percent. Now there is a higher probability that we could get one or two of those hikes at a half a percent. But here's my point. Even if you have as many rate hikes as they're planning and they take Fed funds rate to two and a half or three percent, if in fact the CPI is going to be at 9.1 percent, what level of interest rates do you have to have to bring it down? I don't think it's going to have a large effect. The second thing is the unique circumstances, as you just mentioned, for this level of inflation. We were just getting over a recession that was caused by, by a series of events, a pandemic to a recession. We flooded the country with money. Globally, central banks flooded money to uh, give aid out. And now that brought on inflation, mostly because once everything subsided, the pent-up demand came out and there wasn't the product to give to the people. Those issues are still there. Now, if you add Russia and Ukraine to the equation, I believe Ukraine and Russia produce a large percentage of the imported agriculture, specifically wheat, to the European Union. Russia is a large exporter of gas and oil to parts of the European Union. So that will exacerbate what was already a tenuous situation. And that's the most worrisome part, because you can't control inflation just by taking the demand down. And if they do that too quickly, of course, that could lead to a recession. To actually implement a soft landing with this scenario as it stands, I believe is exceedingly difficult, if at all possible. OK, well, let's go back to inflation for just a bit. Is gold typically a leading indicator or a lagging indicator of inflation? Which comes first? I have found it to be a, a lagging indicator that's not um, tick for tack, so to speak. In other words, if the dollar devalues so much and goods cost more, you'll see gold rise, but it will lag far behind that. The key is, is that when you look at it on a long-term basis, it still has approximately the same buying power that it did 100 years ago. In that period of 100 years, you can find all kinds of instances where it did not keep up with inflation. But as a whole, it does. And the analogy would be like the housing bubbles that we get, where it gets overpriced, they crash, they go up too high too fast, they come down too fast, and then they kind of end up in the middle. It's that balancing act. And that's how I think gold reacts in terms of it being a hedge against inflation. 